All right, welcome to the AIM Code Project. This is about gamification in a higher education online course. My name is Travis Thurston. I'm a, a Master of Educational Technology from Boise State University. Currently, I work as the Senior Instructional Designer in the Center for Innovative Design and Instruction at USU. Back in uh, summer semester of 2014, I was asked to teach uh, ITLS 5265 Internet Development here at USU. This is a course that is generally taught by Kevin Reeve uh, in the spring and fall semesters, uh, but I had the opportunity to teach a summer course. So I had all of the content of Kevin's and I was able to take the course and the rich content that was already there uh, and do an initial course evaluation to decide what I needed to do uh, to either change content or to fix it to be you know, more suitable to my own teaching style. And in that process, I decided that I, I wanted to try to increase student engagement and motivation for the course. And so that's where the idea of, of gamification came along for me, and as well as wanting to improve the overall uh, student satisfaction or student experience within the course. And as I was looking for ways to implement gamification, uh, I came across uh, some literature by John Keller. And one of the quotes that came out was that relevance can come from the way something is taught. And it does not have to come from the content itself. And so when I was looking at a, an introduction to HTML and CSS course, I really felt like the content was somewhat dry and that I could I could use uh, gamification as a as a vehicle to increase that motivation uh, through the way that I taught and through the way I presented the material. So considering his ARCS model, I was able to take the literature and the, the motivational design uh, from Keller and use that as a framework as I implemented gamification into them. So with each of the four pieces of the model, uh, there are kind of process questions that you can use as you develop the content and as you decide how you want to implement it. The first piece is attention. And each category has a, a few different subcategories as well. So within attention, in perceptional arousal, you can ask, what can I do to capture their attention? Inquiry arousal, how can I stimulate an attitude of inquiry? And the variability, uh, how can I maintain their attention? In relevance, uh, within goal orientation, you would ask, how can I best meet my learner's needs? Motive matching, how and when can I provide my learners with appropriate choices, responsibilities, and influences? And familiarity, how can I tie the instruction to the learner's experiences? And this was important in this course, I felt. Third, confidence. Learning requirements, how can I assist in building a positive expectation for success? Success opportunities, how will the learning experience support or enhance the student's beliefs in their competence? And personal control, how will the learners clearly know their successes based on their efforts or abilities? And then finally, the fourth piece of the model is satisfaction. So within natural consequences, how can I provide meaningful opportunities for learners to use their newly acquired knowledge or skill? Uh, positive consequences, what will provide reinforcement to the learner's success? And then equity, how can I assist the students in anchoring a positive feeling about their accomplishments? So as I mentioned, I went through and used this model as my framework as I inserted uh, pieces of gamification or game-like elements uh, into the course. Please feel free to look at John Keller's work. Uh, it's really insightful and it is is very much research based and oriented towards the instructional design process. So now that I had an established framework that I wanted to use, I went through each of those questions and started to inject those game-like elements uh, into my course. And one of the first pieces I felt like was to create a storyline or a uh, a way to incorporate an, an overall theme for the course. I came up with a spy theme to use and I called the course AIM Code Project uh, rather than Internet Development or IDLS 5265-6265. 
So after the development of the course, this was the, the course intro video that I used. Hey recruits, I'm Travis. I'll be your instructor trainer for ITLS 5265 6265. I just wanted to make a quick video and show you the best way to navigate through the ENCODE project course here on Canvas. The home page is your main hub to access the content for this course. Obviously, you'll first want to start by clicking Start and take a look at the syllabus for more details on the course. The green highlighted crosshairs will indicate which level you should be on, and you'll find the quick links to the current level down below. Each level or module must be completed to unlock the next level. Each level will have an overview page, similar to this, and you'll find the learning objectives, items to study, task lists, challenges or assignments, and videos to watch for this coming week. You'll want to click on the black AIM folder to access the intro video for each level. I've given each of your recruits clearance to access the video resources, which will help you complete each level. Also, look for the bug icon to gather clues and extra XP. Each challenge has XP or experience points associated with it, which will be indicated here. That's all I can tell you for now. I'm not supposed to be videoing here at headquarters. If you have any questions, let me know, and good luck. Now, I just want to show you a few things that I did in this course. Uh, besides the items that you saw there in the video. Um, I included what I called a quiz key. And what I required students to do is go through an academic and integrity module at the start of the course. And by completing that module, they got a badge uh, through Canva badges, which was called the quiz key. So I incentivized having the students complete the academic integrity module by giving them this quiz key tool, which would allow them to uh, take the quizzes during the course uh, as many times as they needed. That was done as an instructional strategy because I wanted the quizzes to be more of a learning tool rather than uh, an evaluation or an assessment. Again, I used Canva badges uh, throughout the course as a way for students to, to earn badges for completing levels or modules, for completing the bonus levels that were offered, uh, also the quiz key tool, and then ultimately they could earn the AIM Guild badge uh, upon completion of the course. Throughout the course, I, I injected secret clues. Uh, these were actually uh, little links to quizzes, and I would add in the student name by using the API and pulling in the username uh, of the individual logged in at the time, so I could individualize the secret clue to congratulate each student when they found the secret clue. This would give them a point or one XP when they found the secret clue. And it would also give them a tip uh, associated with their case study for the week or uh, also towards their project, their final project for the course. Another quiz that I added, uh, or I should say an element to a quiz that I added to a quiz that was already one of Kevin's, uh, was this access code. So the access code is a, is a feature in Canvas that allows uh, instructors to put the code in so that students can't access it until they want them to. And this is used if there's a quiz or a test being given in a class or even for proctored at a distance. I use this as a way to get the students to really engage in sifting through HTML code. So I added the word visibility into a hidden div uh, within the page for the quiz. And so students had to inspect the element and, and actually go through and find where visibility was listed in the code of the page to get the access code <laughs> to be able to take their quiz. So that was kind of another interesting element that I added in that was a game-like element uh, but actually very much applied to the content of the course. In the course discussions, um, I had a general forum. I also had a Facebook page and a Twitter account. Uh, within the course in Canvas, I added a user and named that user AIM Code Project. So rather than just having the picture of me as the instructor at the top, each discussion would show that it had been created by this AIM Code Project. 
and then I could participate in the discussions as AIM Code Project as well as myself as the instructor. One last thing I'd like to suggest that is if you're you're interested more about gamification, uh, specifically in, in the Canvas LMS, please feel free to join or set up an account in the Canvas community and join the gamification group. Uh, if you want to contact me on Twitter, you can find me at travesty 328 or you can shoot me an email at travis.thurston at usu.edu. Thank you.